Welcome in the desert near the Prima Donna Hotel awaits our tiring competitors. This is the throw for height, a simple case of throwing a beer barrel over a high wall. This event is about technique. Now Bob is famous for discus throwing but has no experience of this at all. That wall has now reached 5 meters 20 and the shock for everyone is that we've lost Ahola. What I've got to keep in mind is that um, all the people in this competition have experience with this event and I don't have any experience with it. And so all I'm going to try and do is apply what I know in athletics to this event and hopefully I can compete with them. Well, it's a bit like a high jump competition, really. Three failures at any height and you're out. And that's exactly what happened to Bernard Rolly and leader Ahala at 5.20. The rest are still in. Michael Abdullah getting animated as usual. He's in last place overall, but this looks better. Well done. Bill Linden at 5 metres 50, the same height that Michael Abdullah just cleared. He's only had one failure in this event so far and holding it a different way to Abdullah. Couple of big swings and it's well over. And everybody enjoying this. And Fleming Rasmussen to go next. Just one point behind Ahala after the last event, but the Finn will only get two points here. So a good chance for Denmark. One, two, and three, away we go. And it looked easy. Bob Weir now just making sure he's far enough away from the wall. Just two attempts in this event so far and they went sailing over. Five minutes 50, 18 feet. Yes, but it wasn't a clean throw. It hit the wall on the way over, but it was safe. So four men in. You want to see it? The wall going up to 5 meters 65. And here comes Michael Abdullah once again. Well, I think most people are thinking there are probably better things to do with a keg of beer, but here goes anyway. His last attempt at this height. And he's nearly taking off with those swings. No, he can't do it. That's a pity, he's going to finish up in fourth place, but his best place so far. Bill, as usual, trying to stay cool. And Fleming out in the blazing sun. And he's in a bit of trouble now. It's his third and last attempt at 565. No! Nowhere near it, so third place. Bob Weir now, his second attempt. And Bill Linden has passed at this height, so tactics beginning to play a part. Very long arms, he looks very loose, and that is a tremendous effort. Much better than the last height, so at the moment he's actually in the lead. Well, the wall has shot up once again, it's 5 metres 80, just over 19 feet. And Bill Linden is out again. He really is a big, solid guy. Bill doesn't clear this. You've already thrown the winning throw. Oh, good. Then I won't have to take it. <laughs> he will now. Lyndon is back in pole position. Robert Weir. Fleming's got four points. Bob now has failed it once. Go, go, go. Come on. Come on. Even if he clears it, he's going to be behind the Australian on the count back of failures and successes. So this is very, very important. He's got it. And Bill Linden has to go again, and the wall is going to go up even higher. Yuko Ahala won't be in the lead after this. He's down in fifth place. Five metres 95 is a long way up. But Bill is about to explode. Oh, it's oh so close. Back to the tent and another ice pack. Now, Bob would do his chances of getting through to the final. The power of good if he could win this event. Oh, he's just a whisker away. And one attempt to go. Michael Abdullah has found a few new friends as Bill Linden comes back out. He's got to try and beat the wall. Taking his time before the big build-up to the throw. Oh, it 
just scrapes over. He's done it again. The Aussie is really on form, and this competition now is well over two hours old. So can Bob Weir do it yet again? Surely you've won it now. Robert's just uh, keeps pulling him out of the bag. I'm going to borrow his bag later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Rob's, Rob's a, an experienced thrower, probably a lot more specialised than what I am as a thrower, so he's adapted to the movement pretty quick. You can see he's got a, an opposite technique to what I do. I played with this a little bit for a couple of months and developed it. It's a much better technique for me than the other way. I seem to get a much better pull. Well, this is Bob's last attempt to land at this height, 19 and a half feet. That's well over the height of a London double-decker bus and Bob taking his time. And certainly his Olympic and World Championship experience will help in this type of competition with long waits between each throw. If he's successful, it will take the wall up to be on 20 feet. Oh, I put the kiss of death on that throw, and so Bill Linden wins it. Well, for a man with no experience of this event at all, we can be extremely proud of Bob Weir with second place. Bill Linden, though, takes the full six points. It, did, it didn't surprise me, actually. I predicted that my competition would come from, from Robert, being an experienced thrower. The whole idea was to make it difficult for him, and as, as difficult as I tried to make it for him, it seemed to me that um, it wasn't that difficult for him. <laughs> Good points for both of them. They're now tied for third place, with Ahala and Rasmussen in the important top two spots. Event four is going to be fascinating. This last event is set in an historic part of the desert. This road behind me used to be the old wagon trail used by the pioneers. This desert was the last obstacle they had to face before the mountains en route to California and the west coast. Obstacles facing the men today, though, well, they're slightly different. The Atlas Stones. If you haven't seen this event before, each of these stones has to be lifted up onto the plinth behind me. Now, if you were one of these men, you would probably want to go for the heaviest stone first while you were still fresh. It weighs 135 kilos, but this event wasn't designed to be easy, and the lightest stones have to go first. And if they do manage to move every single one of these massive rocks, they will have shifted a grand total of 575 kilos. Fleming has done this event before, but still looks very nervous. And Yuko showing us his rock-hard muscles. Bill dressing for the desert. I've been advised that because you've got large hands and very long arms, you should be good at this. Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? <laughs> Have you tried lifting any one of them? Yes, um, I can lift. Um, I can lift the stones, okay. So um, it would just be a matter of. Um, the strategy and whom competing against in the heat, should I say. Unfortunately, neither Bernard Rolly nor Michael Abdullah did too well. Bernard was disqualified and Michael only lifted one. So, a contrast in clothing. Bill stripped and ready for action. Bob wrapped up in a huge sweatshirt. Can either of these two guys make it into the final? Bob, just the slower away, but look at that. He's lifted the rock right up on his shoulder. Tremendous start by Bob Weir. Can he do it again? Yes, 105 kilos, 16 stones, very easily indeed. Oh, much better onto the wall than Bill Linden. Bill's got two now. Linden is some way back. Away go the sunglasses. That means business. Bob Weir's got three. If Bob Weir can win this event, he must surely go through to the final, but a little stutter there for both Lyndon and Bob Weir. Now, has Bob Weir run out of steam? Oh, he nearly ended up in California. Both men looking exhausted. This fourth rock is 115 kilos. They've got to try and carry it higher. Now, come on, Bob. He's closer to the wall than Bill Linden, but both men are really struggling. Now, I'm not sure he could go that route. He could be disqualified on that stone. I'm not sure he's allowed to roll it up. 15 seconds to go, but both men have had enough. You beat Bill Linden. That's one obstacle out of the way, but there are still two guys to go. Yes. 
I'm not in, I'm not in control of my own destiny. I just, I thought I had the fourth stone, but I didn't know that you could put it on the fifth one and roll it up. Otherwise, I went for the fourth one. But <clears throat> that might have cost me, but I gave it my best, and that's all I can say. I wonder if Bob would have been better stripping to the waist and covering himself in the resin that these two guys have. Look at that. Fleming has got some more now, whether he wanted it or not. So the target for both to ensure they make it to the final is three stones, at least faster than Bob Weir. And he achieved that in 26.9 seconds. But I suspect these two being more experienced will go for all five. A hell out of way the quickest, but it nearly came off. And it's Fleming in the lead now. Now, is it possible for England's Bob Weir to make it? Keep your eyes on the clock. Both of them with two, and it's so, so fast. Fleming's got three. Oh, Fleming is definitely through, I think. Ahala is well away. I fear we may not have a British competitor in the final now. Ahala getting it up well, and Fleming has finished. That is magnificent. This massive rock is over 20 stones for Yuko Ahala, and he gets it. Both men all smiles now, one and two in this event, and one and two in the final qualifier. They've made it. An event that sorted out the men from the boys once and for all, but Bob far from disgraced himself in this his first year. I'm sure we'll see him back. <laughs> I actually waited for him in the last stone. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Wait to see him. <laughs> Fleming, a clear winner in the end, with Yuko joining the Dane in what promises to be a great final. One of Britain's best athletes, Bob Weir, just misses out. In any competition, there have to be losers. But Bob will be back, and little Bernard never lost his smile. So that's it. Eight finalists are in place and preparing for one of the biggest competitions of their lives, along with two new American contestants. I'll be back.